Today we have another smart bird feeder unboxing and review, but this one is supposed to shoot in 4K. And this is the Highbird smart bird feeder from Kama Jojo. So they were nice enough to send it out for us to test. It's pretty heavy in the box. Um, I'm excited to see what the 4K video looks like. I've seen clips of it and it looks really good in those videos. So hopefully what we get is similar to that. So let's open it up here. User guides. So let's see what we got. Little thing from Amazon it looks like where this I'm assuming was sent from. Mounting sticker. A cartoon cardinal sticker. User manual. And a safety advisory sticker. So it's just saying like stuff may detach. So looks like in case things like fall off it, if you mounted correctly, I don't think things should be falling. I'm assuming that's like, a, say like a tree fell on it. It's probably just like to, uh, you know, protect them from liability. At the bottom, we got some packaging. This has a European robin on it, which is, you know, not a species we'll get here. So you have the roof, then a box of the base, it looks like. Which is made out of plastic. I know some people don't like the plastic design, but a lot of the smart bird feeders are plastic. There are some metal ones, but it is a little heavier, so plastic is a little bit lighter. I'll try to hold this stuff up so you guys can see it. So this is the actual feeder unit. The camera is pretty large in here. This is not gonna hold a ton of seed. So like a lot of other smart bird feeders, we saw the seed reservoir is probably not gonna be too big. And the camera is pretty large in here. So this is the stand that you would Put into like a board or something and then the feeder would attach here this is made out of metal which is nice feels pretty sturdy one time i had a raccoon sit on my feeder and it bent this like this doesn't feel like it'll be bent by a raccoon so in here we have antenna attachment cables this is for if you're gonna wrap it around like a post. It's drywall anchors, screws, a micro SD card. I like when they come with a micro SD card. Tree strap, and then the antenna. So let's get it going in the app and then we'll set it up. I'm not exactly sure I wanna mount it. I might mount it on a tree. Um, just cause that's normally pretty easy with like the tree strap, you just wrap it around. If you're gonna do this long term, you're probably gonna to wanna to put it on a pole with like a squirrel baffle on it, and that way you can prevent squirrels from getting on it. But normally when I test them, I just kinda of do a temporary setup. Um, I don't see a solar panel or anything on here, so I'm assuming you'd have to bring it in to charge it. Yeah, so that's kind of unfortunate. I like having the solar panel so you can just charge them while they're out doing their thing, but let's get the app set up. There is a code on the box here that you scan and that'll normally take you to the app that you have to download. So we'll let it send notifications. Sometimes it gets to be a lot. So we'll have to create an account. Verification code. So we'll add a device. Okay, so we gotta turn it on. This is where the antenna goes. We can put that on real quick. Big power button on the back. 
May, we'll see if it needs to be charged. Please configure the Wi-Fi network for the camera. Okay. Sometimes this can Waiting be a to pain. Configure the Wi-Fi network. Please use the camera to scan the QR code. Gener that was surprisingly easy. Wi-Fi connected. Seems like it worked. It's got like full battery. That's nice. Sweet. Cool. The video quality does look really good. Probably lock this in right away. This just slides in. So the roof goes upright and then slides over the top. There we go. So let's put the SD card in. So you can actually pull the camera out because otherwise it'd be hard to get to that SD slot. Then it just opens up. It is kind of cool if you just want to take the camera out, you got a 4K camera. Sweet, let's go get this set up. So yesterday I put the feeder out. I tried using the tree strap. I didn't really have a great tree for it. Uh, and I don't think it worked very well, just the way that I set it up. It's, you could tell how low it is. A squirrel was on there, so it made it even lower because originally it was more up like that. But we have actually gotten some cool images. I think it's a little far away from the Wi-Fi too. So I'm gonna take it down, I'm gonna put it on a board that I got, and then we'll like lean it up and use the tree strap around the board to keep it upright. So hopefully we'll be able to get a view that's not just straight angled down, but it's been neat to see the 4K footage. It does look very clear. So let's take this down, set it up on a board, and then we'll kind of get it ready to go again after we refill it. So this is the new setup uh, on a board. I screwed in the stand and then I wrapped the tree wrap around it just to keep that board against the tree. So hopefully this will give us a little better view and angle. Uh, we will probably have squirrels coming because it's not a squirrel proof setup, but that's all right for now. And uh, yeah, we'll see what else we can capture with this 4K feeder. So we've had the feeder up for a couple days now. Let's uh, go through some of the features in the app real quick. So this is kind of the home screen. You can watch the live. It's dark right now, so we probably won't be seeing, yeah, we won't <laughs> see anything. But during the day, you can check out the live. You can record, you can take screenshots, you can talk into it. So sometimes when there would be a squirrel on there, I would say something to get to go off the feeder. Uh, you can share it with different people. And then the settings, we got our name, we have our Wi-Fi network, we have the camera modes. We can change it from photo, video, photo and video, and then the different qualities of media. And one thing you may wanna look into changing is the SD loop. So I changed the setting of the videos from 10 seconds to 30 seconds so we could capture more, but the SD card did fill up pretty fast. And because it's taking 4K video, that's gonna be larger files, so it's gonna fill up faster. So I turned the SD loop off. Um, the battery lasted for a couple days on its own and then it died. You can unscrew the camera, take it out and charge it. So that's what I did. 
but I feel like uh, the storage filled up and I had the SD loop off. So it was being kind of squirrely. It wasn't recording anything. So I took the SD card out, downloaded the videos, and then I turned the SD loop back on. And now I believe it's working again. And then you can take the water stamp on and off. So it has the little Kama Jojo logo on there. You can turn that on or off. So a lot of cool stuff with this. I think the main draw is the quality. I feel like as we get more and more smart bird feeders, we're gonna get ones that are trying to pick one specific thing that's like, oh, ours has this above the others. And this one, it's definitely the video quality, which is really cool. Um, let's take a look at some of what we captured. So we had it on Thursday. Originally, it was angled really far down because it wasn't mounted, I didn't mount it very properly. Uh, but you can see a little black cap chickadee hanging out and it does have somewhat of an AI asking if it's correct in this case it is So it'll go tag that species and then let's look when it was mounted better. We did have quite a few squirrels Hanging out there because it well, I didn't have a squirrel proof setup, but we got some really nice cardinals uh, It says is northern cardinal, right? Yes, so it kind of has AI where it's kind of asking you. So if you didn't know any of these birds, you might be like, I don't know. So I don't necessarily know how helpful that is, more or less to like a beginner birder. But uh, the quality of the images captured has been really neat. Here's of course some house sparrows hanging out. So that's cool. So some of the downsides are, you know, that the files are gonna be larger. So if space is an issue, that's something to, to think about, but it does come with the trade-off of the quality being really good. It is plastic. Some people aren't huge fans of plastic. Uh, the seed reservoir is not that big. Uh, a pro though is that you can take that camera out. So it's pretty neat. You can just unscrew it, set it up somewhere else. You have a 4K camera capturing video in motion. So that's pretty cool. A couple other things I wanted to mention that I found in the guide here is that it does work with a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network, which a lot of them will only work in 2.4. So it's neat that they've expanded that. Additionally, it says you don't need Wi-Fi to actually use it. So you could put it out, not hook it up to Wi-Fi, and it seems like it'll still capture the media for you as long as it's charged. You just have to then get those images to your computer Looks like maybe the perch extends too. I've just had it as is, but it looks like in this bottom picture, maybe you can extend the perch out. And it does say it's compatible with solar panels or external power sources. So I'm assuming the same company sells solar panels that you can buy separately, or maybe even they have like a package deal. So it is good to know that you can do that, or if you need to take the camera out, you can take it from the feeder, charge it, and then put it back. You should clean it out, especially if it rains. You know, sometimes the seed gets caked into the front, so it's important to do the cleaning. It says you can use it at night. There's an LED light you can turn on in the app. I've had mine take some videos at night, but I'm assuming it doesn't turn the LED on automatically because my videos are just dark. So you can probably turn it on, turn the LED on to check it out, but, uh, Otherwise, it's not gonna turn the light on automatically. Also says there's something called Dr. Bird in the app. That's some kind of AI that you can ask. I did end up figuring out where the Dr. Bird thing is in the Kama Jojo hybrid app. So it's this owl here that has the hat on it. I, it's pretty cute. But if you click it, uh, you can ask it, looks like five questions. I don't know if this is daily. Uh, but it's kind of like a chat type thing. So I asked it, what's the most common bird in North America? It said the European starling. I looked it up, it's like just briefly, and it said robin. So I don't know, take with that what you will. And then I asked it if it could identify a bird for me. And I tried to describe a junco, and it first said mockingbird, then it said maybe titmouse, then it said maybe a junco. So it was kind of, you know, I don't know how useful that's gonna be for you, but you can ask it different things. Um, at least a certain amount of times it seems. And then if you want to do more, you can do different things to like ask it, but you could also just ask like a chat GPT if you wanted, but it is here if you want to test it out. Uh, overall, I would say I really enjoyed this one. So if you want something really high quality, this is definitely a feeder to check out. What did you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.